Okay guys, so sorry that we had to move into the truck for the talking bit of this part, or of this uh, video, but it is absolutely blisteringly windy out there. Hopefully that kind of showed uh, in the video, so you can hopefully understand that, uh, yeah, it was just a little bit too crazy to be outside and get good audio, so I'd rather sacrifice a little bit of good lighting for some good audio. So without any further ado, let's jump into the APO-1S versus the SRK. Hey guys, this is Matt from the future, just reminding you that if you want to see more Alaskan gun, EDC, survival, and bushcraft content, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and of course, leave a comment and a like while you're at it. Now, for those who aren't familiar with this knife here, this is a knife made by a YouTuber called Survival Lily, and regardless to what I think about her channel, or this knife in particular, uh, full disclosure, she did send it to me for review and for testing, and I figured what better way to test this knife than to test it against the knife that it was made to replace. So, for those who don't necessarily follow her channel, a few years back she designed the APO-1S as a replacement for the much beloved Cold Steel SRK. She figured that there were things that she liked about this knife a lot, but that it wasn't quite right, and so she created this knife as a replacement or a, to better fit her needs and her goals. So that's kind of how this knife came along, and if you've never heard of it, it's not too surprising. It's not a hugely popular knife. Uh, you know, it's not you know made by Cold Steel or some big top shot designer like Tops or something. So. Um, that's this knife, but I still thought it would be interesting to, like I said, do a side-by-side -side comparison. And honestly, I have to say that, in my opinion, they performed extremely similar in every single test. And that's not too surprising. They both have very similar grinds. The uh, SRK is a hollow grind, and this is a flat grind from what I can feel. Maybe almost a little bit more of a saber, because it uh, does feel a little bit rounded but the actual performance of the two is very similar. They have very similar blade thickness, they have very similar blade length, blade width, and like I said, the overall design of these two blades is very similar. Now I will say, this blade here does have a little bit more of a clip point, and it kind of enlargens here, uh, and then kind of shrinks back down into a clip point, whereas this also has a clip point, but it's pretty much just a flat edge across and then goes into a clip point. So, not 100% sure why she chose that other than, I'm guessing, probably to aid with chopping, but this size of a knife, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing a lot of chopping with, even though it does have some good heft to it, and I'm sure you could probably do some degree and fashion of chopping. However, if you guys have been around the channel, you'll know that I'm not a very big fan of even chopping with larger knives. I think batoning is far superior and or just using a hatchet or an axe. So I didn't do that test. Uh, one thing I will say when it comes to the ergonomics of these two, uh, I don't like the jimping, even though it's pretty impossible to feel the jimping uh, when you have mittens or gloves on like I did. And the other thing is, being that it is winter time, of course, kind of involuntarily, I had to do this test with, you know, thick, heavy-duty gloves on to keep my hands warm uh, during the test. And I will say that the SRK, as I've talked about in the past, uh, or in past videos, the SRK definitely performed better, and I felt a lot more wieldable. Uh, with thick heavy gloves on and that's because of this handle you know this handle has a lot more going on with it you know it has uh, just more um, kind of complications to the ergonomics and it does feel pretty good in a bare hand but when trying to maneuver with this uh, knife with thick heavy gloves on I just found it a little bit more challenging uh, it felt like I had a lot more to try to hold on to, whereas this blade felt very natural, and because of its lack of any type of, you know, it really just has a finger guard, and that's it. You know, due to the kind of homogenous design of this handle, it really just feels good in the hand, regardless to whether it's gripped barehanded or whether I have thick winter gloves on. So that was one thing I did note about this. It definitely felt uh, harder to wield than the SRK. But once again, I don't think Survival Lily really designed this knife, this knife, with uh, winter survival applications in mind. So, 
yeah, that make of it what you will. Uh, for me, in my personal opinion, because of how similar these blades are, and once again, I know I was sent this blade for free, but this blade does uh, retail for over $100, and in my opinion, and I've said this about a lot of knives, the SRK is just, if you can get them anymore, realizing that uh, Cold Steel has gone through some changes with the ownership of the company, but... Um, original SRKs like these can still be had, at least for the time being, you know, for under $50. And so, you know, for an under $50 knife that you're getting SK5 high carbon in, I like this blade a lot, and it's going to be very hard for me to not choose this blade, because like I said, the performance of both of these knives is nigh on identical in realistic survival tasks. Like I said, this would probably be a better chopper, and of course with the exposed tang, this knife definitely feels stout. It does not feel cheaply made. Um, you know, it, it feels just fine, but this is over $100, whereas this is under $50. So I would probably still go with the SRK, in my opinion just because, you know, for the time being, these knives are very well built. Um, they have the proper ergonomics, especially for wintertime survival, and, you know, they, they performed nigh on identical to this blade, which isn't necessarily a knock against the APO 1S. You know, it's a good design because it's copying a lot of the good elements of the SRK, but, you know, it does just fine. But I think for the price point, I'd rather go with the SRK. However, if you did go with the APO 1S, it's not necessarily a bad knife and you wouldn't be disappointed. One type of thing that I will say is the APO 1S is made out of OS 8, which I think is a little bit questionable for $100. I feel like there's a lot of good knives out there made out of better steels than OS 8 for $100, but uh, if you are, if you like, you know, stainless steel, the APO 1S might be the better way to go because, like I said, the SRK is in um, SK5, which is essentially a 1095, but it is also uh, a coated blade, so you know, it's not necessarily going to be super prone to rust. Last thing I'll note, I didn't do any ferro rod striking in this video, but both of these blades have sharpened spines, so they can both strike ferro rods equally. So that's not a criticism of each, or either, I should say. So anyways, guys, that is the SRK uh, by Cold Steel and the APO 1S by Survival Lily. Those are the two blades that I tested, or those are the two blades in what I thought. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and as always, God bless, and I'm out.